recording. And then I will go to the mission statement first. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious re religious background, and allow for open dialogue. Attendance today at the Helping Parents Heal meeting is voluntary, and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be more informed about many ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal, and we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. And so before I introduce Craig, I know that all of you already know about the Life to Afterlife series that's on Amazon Prime. Um, we were very, very fortunate to have been approached by Craig in the very beginning to see if we would be interested in participating. And um, we have 17 Shining Light parents who participated in the in the documentary. It was an incredible experience. I think that we all took so much away from it. And I feel very grateful that it's been seen by hundreds, maybe thousands of parents um, through Amazon Prime. Um, so tonight, Craig will be premiering a video for parents. It's a journey of the mind called Thinning of the Veil that last six minutes because Craig knows that the veil is thinning and he'll talk more about that. But before that, more about Craig. Craig McMahon started his career in 2004 producing Lionsgate thriller movies, but later moved into focusing on family films. He writes, directs, edits, and is the camera operator on all of his films. He has numerous titles that have been sold in Walmart and many retail stores, as well as many overseas countries. In 2017, he started a new label, Inspirator Films, which focuses on positive, uplifting stories. Inspirator also produces a slate of documentary films, the Life to Life spirituality series, including Mom, Can You Hear Me? That was the first one. I Died, Now What? I want to speak to the dead, the healers, and tragedy by design. So all of those except the healers are on Amazon Prime. The healers is on uh, VIMEO on demand, and it should be on Amazon Prime in about eight weeks. And last but not least, Craig is a shining light sibling. And please, without further ado, let me introduce Craig McMahon, um, who is one of our Shining Light siblings and, again, the producer of this incredible series. Hello, guys. Thank you for uh, coming tonight. I know it's a Friday. I know everybody's got a lot to do. We're all busy with doing our things, and I know Fridays are busy. Uh, what I'd like to uh, first share with you is uh, something that I discovered when I began doing all this research on these different modalities of spirituality. Uh, you have to understand, like, um, I sit with these people for a lot of time. I get to know them, I get to understand them, and I just continue to, as you guys know, really hit a lot of questions to really fully understand how all this works. I spend a lot of time with mediums. I ask them all kinds of questions. How does it work? How can we thin the veil? I spend a lot of time with other experts uh, like the healers. They were amazing. I interviewed 12 healers from around the world. I really got familiar with uh, 
that as another modality. It's, it's something you guys should really consider. I know you're probably into yoga and Tai Chi and all that stuff, but wow, uh, Reiki was really wonderful all around. But during my journey, I uh, began to notice certain things that were working uh, in thinning the veil. And I uh, am a, I'm actually one that actually just tried this to see if it would work. And uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about trust. When I make a movie, I, uh, I, have a, I have a script, I have a blueprint, and I follow it. I never deviate from it. But when I decided to do this uh, Life to Afterlife series, I knew it was going to be challenging because I wanted to make sure that I present the truth. That was really important to me, first and foremost. It's the other was being helpful, hopeful, and healing, like Edgar Casey had said. But um, when, you, when you say, I want truth, you almost have to put a caveat out there, which is, I have, to, I have to just allow them to guide me to whatever I need to research. So I basically just told them, all right, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna give me the truth, I will literally take my hands off the steering wheel and you will write it. And I'm serious, that, that, that's how I put it. I was driving along, I'm in uh, Southern Scottsdale, I was driving along, we have these self-driving cars all over the place. Some of you may know this story, but there's, a, there's something there. I, uh, I told the guy, I said, roll down your window. How does this work? He says, I literally just put in the destination and take my hands off the wheel. And I went, that's how I'm going to do the spirituality series. And uh, it worked. It's working great. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to start doing this in my life. I'm going to start really trusting source. I'm going to start trusting my guides and let me tell you, I, uh, I've become more psychic. I knew all this, this, I pretty much knew Corona was coming. I pretty much knew the, uh, the writing, all that stuff was going to come. I, I knew it. And, and it, it really can help you in life if you can raise your vibration in any way. Now, it's easier said than done. I've compiled some, some things, some information that I think may be helpful and I've created a, a little six minute video for you guys to kind of listen. It's not really a meditation. Uh, it's more of a journey of thought. And uh, I would just like to go ahead and start playing it because it's specially made for you guys. It's not made for ever, anyone else. It's made for parents, parents that have lost children. And I, I've noticed something that was really mind boggling with the parents that we're connecting with their children. And a lot of them are here tonight. So let, with further, you know, let me, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, so what I do is I screen share. Okay. I have the pleasure of spending time with these experts from around the world researching spirituality. I would sit down with them for hours at a time, asking them questions after question. Just like my guides, I was relentless. Spirituality has many different modalities, some I didn't even know existed. So I listened, I filmed, I asked more questions. A common theme I began to hear was connecting to source or going within. Today I'd like to talk about thinning the veil. What is thinning the veil? Thinning the veil is making a change in one's life to communicate with the afterlife. All of my research has helped me understand several different ways to communicate with loved ones that have transitioned. I'd like to start out talking about mediums first. Almost every one of the mediums I have sat down with say that they have developed their abilities by doing years of practice. Yes, there are ones that are born with this ability. However, I believe they either develop these abilities in another life or of a result of a spiritually transformative experience, perhaps in this life. There are a number of parents that are actually communicating with their children that have transitioned. I've sat with them, observed them, asked them again questions and questions. But what I've noticed of the ones that are communicating all shared a similar trait. And of these parents that were the most successful in communication were parents that have somehow managed to get a control on their emotions. 
I understand that is a big statement and it's easier said than done. I'd like to talk to you about the principles of energy. Emotions such as anger, fear, sadness, depression, regret, they all emit a heavy or a low frequency. You have to understand that your child resides in a place of a very high frequency. Earth is thick like mud and the afterlife is more like air. Now some say this veil is like a wall and it's difficult to get past. The trick is to raise your frequency to do what I call the thinning of the veil. That's what mediums basically do. They thin the veil and they bridge the gap between earth and the afterlife. Now when you lose a child, emotions like anger, fear, sadness, regret, these become very real and very powerful. Very powerful at lowering your vibration, similar to a stone wall. Am I telling you to get over your anger? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is to consider surrounding that anger with love. Every time you feel this anger arising, ask yourself, why am I feeling this anger? Is it doing me any good? Can I nurture it in love? Can I, could I nurture it in love? You see, anger needs love. If you can do this, kudos to you, but be patient with yourself. The last thing you wanna do is to be hard on yourself. God loves you, your child loves you. You have every right to love yourself. Now it's just a question of dealing with the next negative emotion that you may be expressing. It's shifting that fear now into trust, shifting that guilt into forgiving yourself or someone else. Some of these negative emotions can be very challenging, sometimes scary or painful, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. I also understand that there is a time to grieve and everyone grieves at different times and speeds. How long should you grieve? You're the best judge of it. It's entirely up to you. But I want you to think about one thing. Your child wants you to be happy. Your child wants you to experience joy again. There's also another reason why your child wants you to live a joyful life. It's because the emotions that come with joy, kindness, love, compassion, courage, empathy, these all raise your frequency. Again, thinning the veil and crumbling that stone wall between us and them. Now, another thing I've noticed and I believe this is important, is to give thanks for any communication that you may get. Always remember to give thanks to Spirit for their communication. Again, giving thanks, in turn, opens up the lines of communication for future visitations. Think of it as an intent. In the fourth episode, I sat down with student mediums. Meditation, kindness, love, all played a part in their connecting. Developing these life changes were key to their success. But something I almost overlooked amazed me. The sixth episode, I talked with 15 people that died and came back. Again, my persistence kicked in. And what I found in common with these enlightened souls was a key theme. These people left their body and went beyond the veil. They saw it from the other side. When you are actually there, in that space, you become a witness to the afterlife and its love. Yes, there is an indescribable amount of love, non-judgment, and kindness. But here's the kicker. When they came back, one thing was clear. They had an instant download of trust. So here they are back in their body on earth. They all feel loved and now have a complete trust in themselves and the divine. I'm telling you this because they now have what experts call after effects. They are instantly transformed because they've seen it felt it firsthand. This spiritually transformative experience has raised their frequency from now on. Their abilities have instantly improved. Now please don't get me wrong. Mediums are wonderful for introducing you to what's beyond the veil. But by continually seeking mediums beyond a reasonable amount can begin to tell the universe that you don't trust yourself. We all have it in us to connect directly to the divine. God gave it to each and every one of us and you're not the exception. You have this connection. Exercise it.
you guys back? Yes, we are. I think some people had a little bit of difficulty hearing it, but I think that um, I think that in the recording itself, because I could hear it, if you are able to play it back, um, it should you should be able to hear it next time um, if you weren't able to hear it this time. And I thought it was beautiful. A lot of people were saying they could hear it. So I don't know. I think right. so. I mean, yeah, I, uh, I was concerned about, you know, the whole Zoom thing, you know, so you guys can hear it. Uh, so, so, so basically what, it's, uh, what I'm saying is that, you know, we talk about mediums and mediums are wonderful. They, they are great. They are great for you to realize that your child is there um, and they love you and they give you this validation. But I think, I think what happens is if you continue to go, I have a friend of mine that actually, he's, he's a bit of a medium junkie. He goes from medium to medium to medium to medium to medium to medium. And I just said to him, when are you gonna realize that you can do this on your own and he is doing this on his own and uh let the universe know that you trust this information and the reason why i'm telling you guys this is because when you sit down with these mediums and you spend the day with them you start to learn that they live a life they have they get information and they put their color on it they put their interpretation on it so what my my thing is it's time for us to start to connect directly to source and it can be done. And, and what I have found out is that when you, it's, there's a thing I call packaging and packaging is taking an emotion and an intent. And I've tried this many times and I've learned this from the, you know, all these wonderful people that I've talked to when you package an intent, like, like an emotion, like love, like, let's say you, you feel your child, you just, just give your, your child a hug. You can feel that love. Now, some of you might say, I can smell their hair. I, I, I can hear their breath. That love packaged together with intent. And some parents say, I seem to get more attention when I'm sad. Sad can be like calling, like calling the number. It's good, but it does kind of thicken the veil. And it's very easier said than done. Um, but if, if, you can, if you can somehow package it with an intent, with love, uh, it can really, really uh, help. And, and you guys, you know, you got to realize you have someone in this group and I just want to point out one person, uh, Elizabeth. You know she talks to uh, her kids, you know, Morgan and, and Chelsea. But if you take a look at her character, her character is very loving. She really is just an unconditional person. Very rarely do I see her not have empathy for something. And all these things are raising her vibration so much. It's like... It's like thinning that veil. Now there's so many things like EVP and all that stuff and all this science, but it's really quite, it's really quite simple because it's inside of all of us. We can connect. I am connecting. I have a deep relationship with my spirit guides. They are to the point where now I ask them a question and they will give me the answer in the morning. It's just a rule we've created. And how does that message come to me? It could come to you guys in a much different way. It could come in a word. It could come in, uh, you know, these uh, synchronicities. It could come in any different way. And I always say, leverage that as much as you can. I have raised my vibration by doing this show. And uh, I, uh, I'm telling you, it, it, it can work. And it's, it's, it's really hard for us, because, especially you guys, because you know, how do you get over some of these emotions? It, it's, it's not getting over it. It's surrounding it in love. And I know that can be really difficult. And I hope I'm not pushing this really too hard. But I really think you guys, 
you guys can do this. I'm telling you, you probably, half of you guys are, the other half, I don't know, but you have it in you. God gave it to you. You have this ability to connect. And um, I love mediums, but it's, it's time. I've been told by the team, my team, it's time for us to start connecting directly. It's really, it, 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 it's time. I, I mean, you can see it. It's happening. It's all around us. It's time for us to connect. You need to connect with your child directly. And I know a lot of you guys are. And um, we can learn a lot from each other. Uh, you know, so Elizabeth, I'd like to turn it over to you because I think, I think you're, you're, you're like, you're like the image of what I feel works. And I'm not, I don't mean to separate anybody. I just want to talk about Elizabeth is really, she just, she's like an angel and, and really it, it thins the veil. I mean, it really, it really works. And I don't know how she got there. I don't know if it's because of her time in India and her, 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 her upbringing or this or that. And we all have these paradigms, but you guys all can do this. If I can do it, you guys can. And I really, I ignored it for many, many years. And it's really about trust and, and belief. Your kids are there. Your, your kids are right there. They're right here. Um, when I was doing the documentary, they were all around me. They were uh, playing shenanigans, like Linda McCarthy says. They, 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 they mess with me. They, it's funny, but they were there. Uh, and I know they were there because they were specifically doing things that I know that that was a signature thing of them. So if anybody wants to talk or, or ask questions about how we can thin the veil, Please. We have so many questions and I would love to talk and that's so sweet of you to say that, but I just want to say that we all are exactly in the same place that I am. And that is that our kids are helping us so much and I feel so grateful that they help us all the time. I know that our kids directed us to you and I know that they helped you, that you were divinely inspired by our kids to do the documentary and then go on and do these other documentaries that you were doing. But I truly believe that it's them that do all of this and they get together and they figure out the easiest ways to communicate with us just the same way that we are figuring out the easiest ways for us to commun communicate with them. And so um, I think it's interesting. There are so many, there are so many questions. One of them is from, um, Sarah Rubel, and she she talks a lot about the soul plans in um, in the talks that she gives, and she's very very good at it. She channels her son Scott, and um, she asked if you think, and I I'd love to hear your answer on this. If we are all soul planned to be able to communicate with our kids, is that is that something that you think? is it, in our destinies is that what we should be doing was it in our plan all along to communicate with the kids is that yes is question? that part of our soul plan is that is that part of the reason that we're here actually to communicate with our kids? i i i think i think you know losing a child is probably one of the worst diverse adversities that we could ever experience and i think it it really it awakens up. It, 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 it's going to wake people up. And I, I mean it in a good way. Um, it's sometimes it's very difficult to look at the forest, you know, with all the trees. Uh, but it, it, I mean, just think of going back to Elizabeth, look, look at, look at all that she's done. <laughs> and I know that was a, that was, wow. That was what, what a sacrifice Morgan did to awaken her, to get her to do that. I don't, was it planned? Um, I kind of think it was, but it's really not for me to say because I wasn't there in the room with this, with these elders and her great grandparents before she was born. And I know that it seems logical that her Morgan Chelsea may have had a conversation about this. It totally makes sense to me. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you need to awaken. Uh, and, and unfortunately earth, we learn through joy and pain and uh we get it and in the afterworld i'm not really sure we really can fully see the the duality or the opposites and um so 
Yes, I do. I do think a lot of stuff is planned. Um, I do think we have free will to make uh, some changes. And I think even Robert Schwartz was one that said that, you know, there could be a plan B, plan C, plan D, and then part A, part B, section two. It could just go in all different directions. But I think the intent is when we come to earth, we probably say, I, I remember having this conversation. I remember looking at my mom and looking at my dad and they were gonna, I know this is weird, they were gonna play this role. My mom was gonna play her role, my dad was gonna play his role, and we were discussing the dynamics of what it would do to affect me. So yeah, I, I do believe in a soul plan because it really, once I understood a soul, I had problems with indignation. I don't like people being harmed. Uh, I, I get really, judgmental and defensive and I kind of get crazy when I see when I see images of a horse getting hit with a brick it it just it bothers me and I'm working on it so I think I in my soul plan I probably sat down and said hey I want to work on indignation and boom I'm going to be bombarded with a bunch of things that are probably challenging it and it's what we take out of it you know um, maybe maybe this indignation is going to take me a couple lives you know, uh, empathy, I think I've got, I think I've got a good handle on empathy, but, um, you know, these are all personal things. Everybody's got their own, their own path. Well, I just want to uh, maybe, maybe talk with some of the other parents who were in the documentary about how they've moved forward. Yes. And one of the people that I really enjoy hearing about this, this whole idea of it being such a transformative experience and actually even bringing gifts into our lives is Lynn Hollihan. And I don't know, I know she's on here. I don't know if she's going to want to speak or if maybe Jeff would. But I think that it is important for everyone on here to understand here she is. I see she's walking into a different <laughs> It's showtime, Lynn. But I just, I, I know that she wasn't expecting to talk, but you look gorgeous. So I'm unmuting you. So Lynn, could you just talk a little bit about this journey? Oh, you need to unmute yourself. I'm asking you to unmute. So can you, there you go. Alrighty. Um, okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I do totally think this was part of our soul plan. And we did plant, plant it whenever, wherever, I don't know. But, you know, Jeff and I have found so much joy since Seven Transition. And that's just such a, a weird, bizarre thing to say. But I can't imagine what our life would be if this hadn't happened to us. So, I mean, it's a choice, definitely. It's a choice every day. But if you can make that choice and your life is just going to be so much more enriched. And you do find gifts along the way. I mean, our kids oh. are constantly sending us things that when we are able to recognize them are so meaningful, right? Totally. Yeah. We get a gift every day and, you know, Devin continues to make us laugh, to smile. We give him credit for things in our life. Who knows whether, he deserves it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you may as well. I mean, but, you know, if, if we're kidding ourselves, who cares? It helps us thrive in life. So it doesn't matter. If well, and like, there are too many incredible coincidences for you to be um, just making it up. There's just no way. All of the things that have happened in our lives are so incredibly um, mind bending that it's, it's hard for us not to accept that this is something that's incredibly special that's happening to us and that the veil is thinning. And that's the big thing, that's the big takeaway that Craig is, is telling us as well. The veil is thinning. We can do this. We can talk to our kids. We can communicate yeah. with well, them. I, I, I don't want to come off uh, in this uh, meeting as a guy that's kind of bashing mediums. I love, I love my mediums. They're some of them are my best friends. It's just that uh, at some point in time, you're kind of confusing the universe with trust. 
and you need to uh, take the training wheels off and start to connect to the divine. You, I'm telling you, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. Um, it, it's there. And God gave every single one of you the, the ability to do this. And, and like uh, Suzanne Wilson says, find that Claire that works with you. Whether it's you hear voices, you smell, you have a knowing. I mean, you leverage that. Start with those. I don't really necessarily hear voices. I don't see images. I smell a lot of things. I do know a lot of things. They make it crystal clear to me. So I've leveraged my clairsentient and it works. And it, it's starting to open up the other uh, clairs as well. And I've seen full body visitations. I've seen them because I'm hanging around with all these crazy people. <laughs> I mean, I was, I mean, when I saw that little boy, I was just like, he's not real. No, he's a spirit. But I could tell you every single detail about him. I've seen full body visit. I, I mean, it's just amazing uh, what I've seen. And, and just recently, my spirit team thinks it's funny to just rip stuff off the wall in my house. Uh, it, it's, and it always, here's another thing I think is really important, guys, is when you're developing these skills, like let's say it's a synchronicity, it's a smell, it's a spoken word, journal it, write it down, like just immediately, right when it, just put right pen to paper, start writing it down and get as many details you're feeling. Where, where was your head at? How did it come? And I've gotten to the point where I've got friends in England that are trans mediums. And they t so I said to him, I said, I have, I was talking to Mark uh, Nelson. We're on the phone and we're about to hang up. And I, I said, hey, go ahead and make those brats. And I didn't see brats. I, I didn't. Nobody put brats in my head. So either my higher self or his spirit team channeled through me. When it came out of my mouth, I looked at it like a third person and realized I didn't say that. So I said to Mark, I go, is that true to you, Bratz? He goes, yeah, I just bought them. I'm going to go. Yeah, I think it was uh, Memorial Day when I was talking to him. So I've learned to leverage that. And, and Lori Campbell said, I'm the Tourette psychic. I say things and I don't know. I didn't say it. So I'm going to leverage those things. So like I'm saying, write it down as soon as it happens. And then start to notice there's a pattern. And then when the pattern turns into a theme and you start to, you start going, hey, now when, when, when I ask a question, uh, usually it's, uh, again, packaged with emotion. It seems to really, really help, guys. And, and, and then like, uh, like the EMDR guys, who, who, who is Al Botkin and all those uh, guys, uh, you know, they work on uh, sadness with uh, bilateral movement, sadness, sadness, sad, just be sad. Sadness is like a 911 call to your kid, but sadness is kind of thick. It has a thickness about it. So when you get over, you know, when your sadness goes from a 10 to a two, then you start to think about your child in a loving way, in a general way. So now you've made the call and now you've made the connection. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it really, it's packaging the love that you have with your child and that intent of communicating. Now, here's another thing too I noticed is you might not get it the way you think you're gonna get it. The information might not be a synchronicity or a voice. It could just be something out of the blue that you may have developed. And that's the thing I say, journal it, write it down and go, wow, I got a weird thing. I got a little, I see a, a, a Polaroid. That's how I know. And so use that Polaroid. I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, it does. And I want you guys to communicate with your kids because uh, they want to talk to you as well. And I think that um, it's frustrating for us and we can live uh, a dual life. And, and you have to understand, I mean, it, to them, it's like, it's like the, life is like real quick. They just think, oh, well, you're gonna be there. You're gonna be back together at home in like an instant, but us, it feels like 80 years, you know, it's just, it's hard to get around that time, that time thing. And I wanted to say something that I've noticed about synchronicities. And I think synchronicities are really cool. 
but I kind of think that maybe you guys should keep the synchronicities to yourself. And, and here's, here's why. Synchronicities come off as kind of like, oh, right, you saw a butterfly. But you know what? If you ask a profound question and you packaged it with an emotion and you get a butterfly, that's a sign. So people might judge you and say, oh, you seeing butterflies again. Now, I've asked questions and I've had a, a hummingbird just literally come right, right next to me. Yeah, it's a synchronicity. It's just coincidence. But I know I asked a question and they gave me the answer, you know? So I think the synchronicities are kind of a private thing. But if you guys want to talk about it, I know you can't help it sharing it to the world and everything like that. But I think the, the rest of the people don't really kind of get us. They don't really get it. It's not something you talk around the cooler at the office. Hey man, I saw a butterfly. That's why I know we're going to make it big on this new account. It just don't, it don't work. You know what I mean? So I think synchronicities like Sally Stacy is one that's really into synchronicities. I mean, she's got it down. Leverage it. She goes into her car in the middle of the night, turns it on and says, what's on the radio. And then she gets her answer. How crazy is that? What Claire said, what Claire is that? I get in my car at two o'clock in the morning, her husband, I don't know, her husband's probably going, what are you doing? I'm starting the car, I gotta listen, I gotta put on the, the XM radio and see what, what's on the radio, that's the message. And it works, I mean, it's so crazy, but uh, she's leveraging the heck out of it, you know? So, uh, so go ahead, if there's any questions, you guys. And her son knows that that's the way that she's communicating, but uh, let me just quickly say something. Watching your documentaries several times, um, and I learned that unconditional love, loving my sons without senses, and I'm still healing, but most importantly, I learned to know that they are with me. You brought me uh, to me a different perspective in my life. You are my savior. Thank you. So it's written, the name is iPhone, but I'm sure that this person actually has a name, and thank you for writing that. And I want to also just say, uh, speaking about trying to communicate with our kids. Joni is saying, um, I don't want to pull on my son too much. I want to release him from my grief in order for him to carry on with his divine journey. Can communicating with him hold him back spirit, spiritually? Do you have any thought of that? Um, I, I, again, when I found out that spirit can multitask, again, it's hard for our human minds to understand I was literally talking to a guy, he lost his wife, a very young woman too. And he just called me and he just said, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm using the, gr the, 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 the grief, I'm connecting with her with the grief. I said, yeah, that's cool. And I just, again, tranced. I said, she wants you to be happy. And she clanked a glass in my kitchen. I mean, so here she is in the living room with him and she's in my kitchen. So they can actually multitask. So I think that, um, yes, my mom is, I think my mom is one of them. She's really busy and I've released her to, uh, to heaven to, uh, cause she's busy doing things. Now my dad, he likes to hang around, you know, he likes to bop back and forth from heaven to, uh, and, uh, both of my brothers, uh, you know, they're, they're busy. You know, one was a car accident, the other one was suicide. So I just see it as that exit point. But uh, the question was, I, I don't think that's true. I think they can connect, they can go, they can be doing something and go, oh, my mom's talking to me something right now. I mean, we just, I mean, look at remote viewers, look at, look at, look at healers that can heal you across the country. How do they do that? I mean, they don't need to be right there, but they are. See, that's the thing. It's hard for us to understand that they're right here and over there and over here. You know, I, I used to find it really funny when I was a kid. I said to my mom, I said, we go to all these uh, uh, malls and there's a Santa Claus. And then we go to another mall and there's another Santa Claus. And then we go to another mall and there's another Santa Claus. And, and I was really confused. And so we started talking about Jesus. And, and, and I, I hear these people talking to you know, like Howard Storm, he, he met uh, Jesus. And uh, I was like, Jesus can be in a thousand different places, helping one person, he, you know, Buddha can be 
with 15 p it, it i i just don't think that they're uh uh it works like that but that's just my anecdotal uh conclusion that's a great answer and i also just want to go a little further on that i i want for all of you here to know that if you are not yet communicating with your kids, they can wait forever. And however long your grief takes, it will not affect them at all. They, they are good. They can hug us. Even if we aren't necessarily feeling that hug, they're feeling it. And they are so happy. And they're with all of our kids. They're all having a blast. So they they have they're not missing out if you're not able to communicate so don't feel like you're panicked and in a hurry because you're not doing it yet and that they're going to be sad they're not going to be sad their time space continuum is so different from ours um but also deb is saying i have more anxiety since my daughter passed is that affecting my vibration what do you think Craig? well from my research, um, you know, anx anxiety uh, lowers the vibration, yes. Um, but if I could ask you to, uh, what are you learning from that anxiety? And can you, uh, can you surround it in love? Uh, I've seen this work with cancer. I've seen it work with a lot of, a lot of things. You know, love really you know, can really do a lot of things. And, um, it, it, you know, I think when you start to look at anxiety and um, anger and guilt, it, it really, it kind of thickens it, you know? So if you can, boy, it's easier said than done. Life's hard. I mean, it, it really is. How, how does one get over the anxiety? You can either take drugs or you can uh, meditate a lot. Um, there is a new thing they're doing uh, in Japan, which is called forest bathing. And I thought it was kind of funny because I thought it was a nude thing, but it's not. It's uh, what you do is you go out to the forest and you reconnect with trees, energy, animals. Uh, I don't really have, you know, we don't have too much <laughs> vegetation out here. All we got is a tumbleweed going on. But um, getting out and uh, clearing the sponge, you know, really kind of helps. So you might want to look into, uh, it actually works. It, it actually uh, helps out with the serotonin and the oxytocin, which is really, really cl close with anxiety. Um, it depletes, you know, uh, those, those things. So connecting to mother earth really helps. But see if you can in time, uh, surround that anxiety and love. I've seen it work with cancer. Are you guys there? Hello. I think Elizabeth is froze, but we're, I, I think I, the rest of us are here. I think she's mesmerized. Yeah, think she's she's right. taken aback <laughs> by this profound <laughs> message. You might want to tell her that she's, uh, so I don't know, Irene, could you take over in the interim and, and sure, see I'll what look questions? Some, uh, I'll look at some questions. Um, I am back. I'm sorry. I, I got kicked off. So I'm going to rename myself. Right now I'm Brian Smith. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead. That was the weirdest thing. I've never had that happen before. But I'm back. Here I am. So, Yay. Um, <laughs> Yay. So I See, had a question. You went off, you went off in the forest bathing. You, you went off. Yeah, well, I was actually going to say that we have a gentleman who does that in California here. And um, I've been wanting to, um, and he does it in Arizona as well. And I was wanting to try to do that with our group. But um, unfortunately. Well, that, was, that was one thing that I noticed about the parents that were connecting with their kids. They do get out and hike. They do get out in energy. And, yeah. and get the energy and uh it's pretty toxic out there you know i mean you go <laughs> just go into the grocery store it's like combat you know uh so uh get out in nature uh you know i meditate in a strange way i i really don't know if there is a proper way to meditate because 
I, uh, I do micro meditations. I, I actually do like four minute meditations, like out of the blue, I'll just, I'll just do that, you know? So I think meditation really uh, helps with the anxiety as well. I think you're right. And I also think that um, it's interesting that you talk about connecting to nature. I was not able to practice yoga for years after Morgan passed. All I wanted to do was climb to the highest mountains around where I live. And I felt like he was hiking with me. And um, I think that that is something um, that's a very important part of healing is to be able to connect to nature. And I've had healers tell me that it's so important for us at least once a day to go out into our yard and plant our feet in the ground and really feel that connection with the earth. I, um, I, have, a, I have a story about fear. Uh, Franz in Ho uh, Ho uh, uh, Holland, he's in Holland. He's a Reiki healer. You might want to, his name's Franz, Franz Stein. Uh, I spent some time with him. And I said, Franz, you really hung out in those, uh, you know, sacred places learning. And he, he, he said he had a problem with fear. So what they do, these, these monks, they, they hung him over a mountain. And uh, he had to hang on to a rope. And he could see this. So he faced that, um, he didn't surround it in love. I don't know, maybe he did, but uh, I think that has something to do with, uh, Mark Ireland once said, you know, you gotta get through that, you gotta go through the grief, you know? You gotta work through it. So what Franz was doing, he was working through his fear. And what, that ha what the benefit of working through the hanging over a mountain with two, two little Japanese guys holding your, your ankles, is that he began to trust himself and he became a more powerful uh, healer. So again, I, I, you know, I, I love all the science guys, but they really don't talk about the simplicities of that word fear. I mean, in, in, the, in the documentary with uh, the parents, we talked about happiness and joy and the paradigms that are out there, you know, where uh, you're, uh, if you find yourself giggling or laughing and you're like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have fun because um, that means I don't love my child. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy how we've set up these paradigms, these traps. And it's from what I understand, and I know a lot of you guys would agree, is that uh, especially the ones that have birthday parties and stuff for their kids, they want you to. I mean, I, I think um, Jeff Olson said uh, his wife wanted him to meet this girl and get married and Again, we, we, we think the separation, you know, we're all one, you know, that she wants him to be happy. You know what I mean? She's not jealous. She's not jealous. She wants Jeff to, you know, to be with the new person that, uh, and she's doing her thing, you know? So anyway. Well, and I just want to say that you are a very good example of this. I think that uh, kids who are shining like siblings, and a lot of you are parents on here to other kids as well. Um, if they are able to heal and move forward from what's happened in their lives, and again, they have a much harder path than parents do in many cases because they feel that they have to heal their parents first and then heal themselves. But what I was going to say is that what you guys do later in life can change the world because you have that communication going on with your brothers. You know um, about uh, exactly yeah. what is important in life. You don't fear death. You are working towards the greater good of, of everyone. And, and I think that that um, frequently is, in the, is the case in these kids because they want to live for themselves, but they especially want to live in honor of their brothers or sisters in spirit as well. Yeah, I, I think there's another dynamic with, kid, with siblings is that like from my point of view, when my brother was killed in the car accident, I, I, was, I bear witness to uh, how my dad reacted and I saw how it, it changed him and my mom. And it changed my dad in such a way that we were, we were Catholic and he said, that's it. I'm an atheist. 
And my mom, she went the other way, polar opposite. She went into spiritualism. So as a child, as a sibling, I'm just like, one's going this way, one's going that way. Well, I think I'm just going to go spiritual dad. I think, you know, it's a pretty grim way of looking at it. Uh, I like the whole idea that there's a purpose here. So I went that way. But I think it's complicated for the siblings because the parent is, is dealing with their own, their own thing. And the other kids uh, can feel neglected, can feel confused. I, 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 don't forget, if you have siblings, don't forget they need, uh, I, I can contest this, they need to, uh, and my mom was really good about it. She really, and I didn't understand it too well. I, I was still pretty young, but anyway, so there's. Well, there's let me ask you a question that Susan has asked in the chat box. Any suggestions for a brother who lost his younger brother to suicide and is very angry? Is the brother that's living angry? The one is, yeah, who's living is angry. Is there something that maybe she well, can do? Well, you know, uh, my brother, uh, he committed suicide. And uh, I guess I was, uh, I see it as an exit point. I don't really judge. And if you take into consideration, I've, I've asked Isabella Johnson, you guys know this medium, I've asked her, if I were to ask you, Isabella, the date I'm supposed to die, would you tell me it? And she said, yes, I can tell you the day you're going to die. I said, I don't know if I want to know that. And I said, do you know your date? And she said, yes. So, I mean, when I take that into context, I think when it's your exit point, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much free will suicide is. I think it's kind of, uh, that's a really tough one. But I don't, I, I noticed that when my brother killed himself, he had two kids in high school. And everybody said, uh, how selfish he was to leave those kids unattended. And yes, there was a ripple effect. They, it did affect them. And, and, and that's how our society uh, sees it. You know, it's uh, what a selfish person and they naturally want to get angry. But was I angry at my brother for doing that? No, I, uh, Again, that would be uh, that would be judging him, and uh, I'm not responsible for his path. And I don't know if he had an arrangement with his two kids that said somewhere around this age, when you guys are just starting to get into high school, I'm going to pull the net away, and you're going to be on your own. You know, something happened to me. I was having a problem with a lot of people with death threats. You know, from atheists to uh, evangelicals to uh, scientists. They were attacking me saying I am sucking, you know, money out of unfortunate souls and everything like that. And I, I, I noticed the atheists were the mo you know, were very vocal. And uh, so I asked my spirit team, I said, uh, what's this problem that I'm having with these atheists? They're, they're so, they're so harsh and mean and everything like that. And I just, again, I feel like judging them. I'm like, I can't imagine being that stupid, you know, like living a life where you just, so they explained it to me was that they're on a path of doubt. And I was like, okay. So just imagine living your life without a God. Imagine yourself living a life with no net. No one's going to catch you. Everything falls on your shoulders. So now they have to believe in themselves. They have to support themselves. They trust they don't have that net. So they're working on doubt. So I was like, how can I judge an atheist when they are, they are learning about doubt? Now, maybe that's one thing that that person wanted to learn in this, in this light, in trusting themselves, trusting themselves in doubt. Just think about that. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's crazy. 80 years and that's what you do? Maybe two lifetimes? I don't really look at all the science stuff. I look at it as life as a human experience. I think we're all, it's all about relationships and it's how we treat each other. And it all comes back to the life review. So I know that I've done a lot of judgment in my life and I know I'm gonna to have to watch that life review, but I'm doing my best to try to change it. And that's just what I'm doing. I don't really 
expect you guys to do, you know, that the same, but I mean, I think it has a lot to do with uh, your perception and love and how we treat each other. I, I, I think kindness is probably one of the biggest, uh, I mean, I, I, I almost wanted to do a documentary where like that guy that ate McDonald's every day. Okay. He eats, eats McDonald's every day, gets his blood check. Doctor saying he's going to die. He's got diabetes, all this stuff. I was like, well, what if I were to just set out the intention that every single person I came in contact with, I just surround them in love. I wanted to do this documentary and I thought, Oh my gosh, I'll probably lose my house. I'll probably, you know, my brain started to go, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult. It really is. But, um, <laughs> I don't know why I told you guys that. It was just a, a stupid, my, my brain going. I wanted to see what it would do to my soul if I could just, you know, I mean, I can't just walk up to the guy at the grocery store and start hugging on him. He'll hit me, you know? So um, I can do kindness. I can be kind to everybody. So I thought, what would it be like if we just all were kind to each other? Um, I can't imagine the world that we would live. But, you know, that's what earth is. Well, I wanted to just bring in someone else, if he's still available, to talk about kindness and about the healing of the healing quality of compassion and kindness. Um, if Ernie's still available, are you are you here, Ernie? I saw you earlier, and now I'm not sure if you're still listening. Um, but if you are, maybe you could unmute your microphone. Let's see. He was on the first page before, and now I don't see him. Of course. Okay, then let's try Carol, because she's here. I see Carol right here. And maybe Carol could unmute. Could you just talk a little bit about how um, kindness and helping others just changes, changes the way that you grieve and the way that you feel? Because yeah. you're our Cave Creek affiliate leader, and you're such a good example. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And it's funny because early in my journey, I was angry and, you know, I went through all the same emotions that we all do. I felt like the victim and I, um, I didn't believe in God. I didn't know that I didn't. And then when my son passed, I really thought, well, if there is a God, he really screwed me over, but, um, I'm happy and I have found so much joy. I live so free. I don't worry about anything. I talk to my son. I hear him all day long. He gives me signs. All He gives me the number 11 all the time. But I trust. I love the word trust that Craig uses because I trust. I never question if it's him. I just say, thank you, Tyler. Um, when I worry about my other son, I'll hear him in my head say, he's fine. You know, chill out. But what I have done, uh, I have made helping parents heal a huge part of my life. And that to me is more important than my job. Uh, helping other moms, I find so much fulfillment. I love to share my stories about, about the signs I've received. I love to, I, there's nothing that makes me feel better than when somebody says, you, you just gave me hope. You've made, you know, I know I'm gonna be okay. Because in the beginning, I did, I did not think I would be okay. And in fact, when people would say, give it time, I would just get mad because I would think, well, you don't know because you have no idea how much I love, how much I love my son and I will never be okay. But, but I, I don't feel any guilt for being happy. And um, I just know I make them super proud of me. And I, um, but really I feel so fulfilled. I feel like, cause I was the type of person that had this vision of how life was supposed to be from the time I was a little girl. You know, you get married, then you have your kids, and then you buy your house, and then they have to grow up with the dog, and, and on and on and on. And it's, I've released all of that, because now I know that, you know, I still have another child here, but he has his life. And uh, I know that my per I really believe that my purpose, even though I'm a wife and I'm, I'm a mom, and I would be a mom even if Tyler was my only child, uh, but I know that my purpose is really helping parents heal and helping others. And I'm not saying that in order to feel better, you have to, you know, be an affiliate leader with helping parents heal. But I think you don't have to be an affiliate leader to, you know, put something on Facebook saying, if, you know, if you know anyone who's lost a child, please call me because I would love to meet with them and talk to them. 
uh, because really it, it fills me with joy every time, every time I give, make somebody smile, every time I share my story and, and um, it gives them hope. Uh, it just, you know, just, I'm kind, I try to be kind to everybody. I just, that makes me feel good. Even if somebody is, you know, even if I feel like somebody isn't nice to me, I, I'll just keep my mouth shut and I'll think, well, you know, they, who knows what their story is or, but I just, I have found, I have found so much joy and I live so much freer today than I ever have. It, it's, I'm calm. I'm happy. I, I talked about this in my video, just the smell, you know, I wake up and I smell my coffee and I walk outside and I hear the birds and I watch my little dogs running around. And that just, that fills me with joy. Whereas prior to that, it was always worried about, well, should I, you know, should I get a new car and what kind of a car should I get? And, you know, should we be remodeling the house? And don't, don't get me wrong. I still like to remodel my house and have nice cars, but that is just, that's just an extra for me. That's not my purpose anymore. It's not about what I have and what people, you know, what people think of me. Um, I'm just, I just live, I just live a really great life, which is seemed impossible. And I know that early on in the journey, people think it's impossible. And I remember seeing, I loved I used to follow Sarah early in my journey, Sarah Rubel, <laughs> and I loved her. I loved her messages, and I just thought, oh, she makes me feel good, and that's what I want to share to others, because I know what it meant to me when I met Elizabeth and uh, Lynn and all of these people that, I, that it, are really my family now, and so uh, that's really all I have to say, but I do trust and I do believe that as we as we know, it's our kids, they come around more and more and more. And it's not that they want to, it's just that, you know, that veil has thinned and they're able to. Carol, Carol, I have a question for you. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about the moment you started to really trust? What, what was it that like, where, where were you in your head? Like, when did that happen? Well, sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, <laughs> it happened. I mean, as soon as the signs started coming, because they were so, as soon as the signs started coming, and, and, and Tyler, I believe that my soul plan, I think our kids are very evolved when they, when they leave this earth really young. I believe that, you know, I, don't, I think that they're just, they're, they, they don't have to be here for very long. So they're very evolved. And so he was able to give me these signs that just, there was no, there was, there was no explanation for them. And I wouldn't even want to share them with people because they wouldn't believe me because they think, oh, that's impossible. They almost think. So the minute I started getting these, these signs, uh, and before I even got the signs, I shouldn't even say that because the signs did come. But I started, I started going on a, a mission to, to find answers. And I went on this mission for a couple of years where all I did was read and read and read and go on YouTube and look for you know, near death experiences. And, and I, I, that I didn't work for a year, which probably wasn't the smartest financial move, but it's okay. Cause that's what I needed. I needed to take that time and I needed to learn everything I can learn about the afterlife. And once I learned, and once I knew it was real, then that's when everything changed for me. That's when the signs just started coming in and then, you know, I took it the next step. I thought, okay, I know he's here, but I need to learn how to talk to him. I need to hear him. I need to connect with him. And I saw medium six months after he passed and Suzanne Wilson. And that, that was amazing. I mean, that changed my life because all of a sudden I thought, oh, he's not gone. And I went home and brought out all his pictures, which I'd put away because yeah. it was, they were too painful. So it was really a combination of everything. But uh, I just, the moment I knew that, you know what, he isn't gone and I could talk to him, everything changed for me. And then it just went from there. I'm not saying I didn't still have my, you know, my sad moments and my, but I always say, I, I can't even believe it's been five years. That's how quick life goes. And so that used to bother me. And now I go, oh, wow, it's been five years. So I know within a blink of an eye, I'm, you know, we're going to be back together. Yep. So, so I don't know if that kind of answered it, but I, that, that's, 
That's a great answer, Carol. And I, before, before we miss out on this, um, people are asking, Craig, when um, maybe those videos will be available in Canada. Um, right now they're available on BIMEO. Are, do you know if Amazon Prime is ever going to um, make them available or do you think that that's going to be difficult moving forward? Um, yeah, uh, can't, I don't know what the problem is with Canada. I mean, I can get in England and uh, I, I really, they're just, uh, it's, it's their own, their own thing. It's just not available for, uh, and I have, my wife's Canadian. Um, we have a lot of relatives that um, are uh, Canadian and uh, you know, that's why they, I put the Vimeo thing there because it can uh, work. Uh, they can watch it on any device. Unfortunately, you gotta, you know, you have to rent it. I'm sorry, but. Uh, well, that's good to know. And then also, I just wanted to thank Carol, thank Lynn, but also say that there are so many other healing people on this meeting tonight, including yourself, obviously, Craig, but Irene, as well as Sarah Rubel, who's not an affiliate leader, but who has done so much to help other, other parents as well as Suzanne Klokangas, uh, Roseanne Norris. We have a whole bunch of affiliate leaders, Patty May, who's been an affiliate leader for years and years. Um, I'm just looking here as we go through. There, there are so many people who are here to help everyone else get up to speed. And so what our, what our role is to reach a hand back and pull others forward. And I think that that's such an exciting thing to do. I think that Carol feels that way. I know that I feel that way. I know Irene feels that way. It is just the most amazing feeling when someone gets it and they understand that this isn't it. This isn't it. There's just no way that it could be it if so many of us are experiencing the same thing that has now been able to be illustrated so beautifully with these documentaries that you're doing, Craig. Yeah, thank you. Um, there is one story uh, we, you know, I was going to talk a little bit more about trust and how it really, it really helps thin the veil, the trust about the near death experience people. Um, when they, when they go on the other side of the veil, they bear witness to it and they see it as, firsthand this is real they see their divine and you know whether it's a, a god or an elder or whatever jesus whoever they they actually are a witness to it and when they come back they have this instant trust because they know they saw it with their own eyes and that's why they automatically just become psychics they become mediums they become uh, their abilities are heightened just because they are bear witness to the the tr the that they that there is life after the you know on the other side of the veil. So they automatically get this instant download. Because I used to I used to kind of baffle me when I'd go, well, how do they get these after? How do they come back and now they have abilities? I think that is just so crazy. They, so what what is it? You go past the veil, you come back, you immediately got these abilities and no it, it's it's because they they saw it firsthand now they have this instant trust they don't question it they don't even question it for one second they believe it's more than a belief they just know and that's why they come back and they're 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 communicating with uh spirit you know so if you can trust yourself and that's why i kind of brought up the whole thing about you know mediums uh you know it it, take the training wheels off, guys. You can, you can do it. You, you really can. <laughs> and, and you're going to, you know, you might wipe out and uh, skin your knee, but um, uh, just keep practicing it and journal. And um, you can, you can't, we can't thin this veil. I, 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 I'm a witness. I, I've seen it happen. I've got, they're very vocal. They're very loud. They're, you know, ask, ask some of the that's ask Elizabeth. I mean, is Morgan quiet about it? I mean, is he, does he, he probably, you know, he's a big guy. He probably comes in with an, a profound message and you're like, okay, you know, so 
It can be done. Well, it's not just Morgan too. I just want to say that it's Morgan, <laughs> yeah, no. it's Carly, it's all of these kids. They are constantly keeping me up at night and then waking me up early and telling me stuff to do. And I don't mind it at all. I feel so grateful to do it. And so I know they're all working together. They're all, they're all, and they're here tonight as well. And they are so proud of all of us. And the most important thing is just hang on tight. It's, it's a difficult ride in the beginning. It gets a lot easier as you move forward. And um, we've all been through it. Irene's been through it. I've been through it. Craig's been through it. Carol's been through it. You know, all these people who have been through it um, were better people because of it. And I know that, um, that it has happened for a reason. It, it wasn't something that just randomly happened that our kids passed. And no matter how they passed, whether it be suicide, whether it be an overdose, whether it be um, an accident, every single one of these things is exactly the same. It's an exit point. And um, it, Worrying about the way that they passed shouldn't be something that holds you back from being able to move forward and do wonderful things in your children's name. Because um, we, the one thing that we have to remember not to do is to keep asking ourselves, why me? Or why did this happen? I truly believe that we'll know that soon enough. In the blink of an eye, we're going to be over there with them. And I'm going to be hugging every single one of those kids because there's no COVID over there. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, are there any other important questions that we need to answer before we, uh, we finish? Uh, Craig, did you have anything else that you wanted to say beforehand? Um, no, I, I, uh, I just, just, just coming back to that whole thing that, um, they're right there. They're, uh, right here, you know, I mean, they're, they're there. We just can't see them and, and time that linear time thing kind of gets in the way. Uh, we kind of go back to that, uh, individuality and we, we kind of get confused with this word of being one. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, but um, we're in a unique time, I think. Uh, the stuff that's happening, I, I have, uh, oh, I, there is one thing I did want to say. I, uh, I had to turn off the news. I, uh, I kind of had to, to keep my uh, limit to Facebook because there was so much negativity. Lacey told me, you know, you can snooze things for periods of time. But uh, I'm not trying to stick my head in the sand. Uh, I should be made aware. I should be aware of what's going on with the, with with everything. But um, it does lower my vibration uh, to watch a lot of the news, and that that's just me. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but uh, you get caught up in it, and um, it, I'm not really sure I can control it. I can just like. Uh, do the best I can with the person that's right in front of me, you know, try to be kind to them. I can't, you know, but putting this, putting the spirituality on a platform or it's really in a public television, it's been a battle um, because they want all the paranormal stuff and all that negative stuff. And, you know, I get it, but, I don't know. Do you guys agree? Do you think that the news and all that stuff can kind of get, there there's, should be a diet to the amount of uh, negativity uh, that is just flying around like crazy. Uh, so I, I've talked to some, some mediums and, and, and some close friends of mine, they say that they, they really turn off a lot of that uh, news stuff. So what do you guys think about, you know, does it, does it help? I, I think it does. I think it, it does. I think you're right. I think that, um, I think that one thing that we all have to understand is that this is 
bringing about an enormous shift. And I believe that we're going to be more compassionate, more caring, and more connected at the end of this. And I do believe that we have to hold on tight. This is one of the parts of the journey that we also have to hold on tight, but that we'll all be okay. Our kids have got our backs. Um, and one last question, Badisha asked this earlier, and unfortunately when my computer logged off, it disappeared. So she sent it to me again. Um, trust, letting go of negative emotions or covering them with love. What other tips uh, would you suggest to connect better with our kids on our own and how to get better control over our negative emotions? Do you have, that's a pretty long question, but do you suppose that maybe you could? I, I would just like to say, if you can, if you can challenge yourself, if you get a situation where you see your anger is rising, can you surround it in love? Can you try it? Just, you'd be surprised what, it can, what it'll do. And you know, sometimes I, I kind of just ask myself, well, what is this anger right now trying to teach me? And after I, re, you know, after I analyze it, I realize it's kind of like pointless. It, you know, I mean, I, maybe you do have a reason to be angry. I, I, you know, I don't know, but I think if you can surround it in love, uh, that really uh, helps. And also understanding that anything that we're getting angry about is probably a learning experience, right? So right. we can be angry about it for a couple days and then we look at it and say, what did this teach me? There's got to be something good that's come out of this. And I think that that mostly is the case, that we find out that it's pushed us to another level of understanding, uh, something that our kids are actually wanting us to know. You know, Elizabeth, I, I remember you and I talking about something that was uh, kind of interesting. And it was, uh, we talk about people that have really easy lives. I mean, they've got the perfect job, they got the perfect spouse, the perfect teeth, perfect everything. They, everything seems to work for them. They just keep making money and everything's great. And Elizabeth, do you remember we kind of came to the conclusion that that's there's not really much to learn <laughs> through that kind of life? So you guys, you have to pat yourself on the back because you're very, you have a lot of courage. I mean, think about that. I mean, you actually are living through this. And just think of the courage. You're, you're you're going to be able to take that back to the afterworld and say, I got that badge. It's courage. I, uh, I faced it. I knew it was going to be painful. It's what you take out of it, you know, take out of that experience. So I, again, I, I keep going to the divine virtues. I don't know. I think that's probably, uh, I, you know, I say it a lot, but I, I just look at every single one of the, of the virtues. Um, and I've, I, I think Carol kind of pointed out one thing is materialism is when does it end? I mean, where do you go? What, what is it? What is, what does it really do? It, 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 to me, it just, uh, it creates another problem, you know, letting go of all that stuff. My wife just says to me, she says, you could probably live in a cardboard box. Couldn't you? And I said, <laughs> yeah, I probably could. I, I don't really care. I've had, I've had nice cars. <laughs> they're, they're just a car, you know, after a while. And it really just doesn't, it's not important. What's important is to me is my life review. You know, I, uh, I really think about that. Every time I come to a situation where somebody is being very in my face and rude, I think about, oh, this is being recorded right now for my later viewing. So how I act is going to be something I'm going to think about and I'm going to have conversations about it with elders and spirit guides. So might as well just say, Hey, it's cool. You know, I get it. You're angry. And you know, spirit gave me this, uh, this phrase. They said, you truly don't understand until you're one. And then they told me that there's a double sided to this. And that is, you truly don't understand it and you truly don't understand the situation until you realize that we're all one 
and you don't truly understand it until you're in their shoes and you are one. Like Isabella in her past life was black. It's just, it's great, you know? I mean, you truly understand it when you're in that shoes. And I don't wanna go there with that whole thing, but I think um, you get the point about that. Uh, you truly understand it when you're one and you could do those double, double uh, meanings. Um, it really helps me with this, uh, trying to understand a person that's coming at me. That's angry. Why are they angry? I'm not in their shoes. I'm not, I, I, I got to kind of figure it out. What, what's going on in their head? What's, what's, what's the problem? It, this could be with my wife, you know, it could be with anybody. So, um, take a deep breath, <laughs> you know, consider that this is being recorded for life review. My performance is really all I got is how I react, how I react to the situation. So um, I'm going to try and it's not easy guys. I, I, but that's the beauty of earth. I mean, it's full of wonderful experiences and I know we learn through pain and joy and sometimes the pain is just God awful. But um, if you really think about how many things have come out, I mean, of the wonderful parents that I interviewed, I mean, they're all, they're all doing wonderful things. Now, would they have been doing those things? I, I don't know. I don't know. But they're, uh, they're going above and beyond. And let me tell you something. I mean, it's, if you just think about those, those parents that I talked about. They're going to be very proud of themselves, and their kids are proud. So, um, again, it's kindness. I really think it's – if you can't just go hugging the guy in the grocery store – can you be nice to them? Can you, can you smile? Can you give them some, some room? Because if I raise my anger, I'm just making it difficult and I'm thickening the veil. So there's that. That's beautiful, Craig. And you are exactly right. And being able to pay it forward by being kind to anyone that we meet, even if we understand that they're being a jerk in the post office or any of these other things, if you can surround that with love, it's always yeah. much better. And we, we will be so much happier when we get to our life review. Um, the, last, the last question, because we're, we're running out of time here, Sangeeta had asked about the fact that she got a lot of signs in the first five months from her son, and now they've tapered off. And I don't know if you want to answer this, but I just want to say that all of us who are way, way, way farther down the line, we still get tons of signs. But in that very beginning stage, I think that our kids are working overtime. And I think that they have all the other kids working with them to get through to us because we are so deep in that grief and they feel like they have to be able to get that connection. Um, <gasps> Then they have lots of stuff to do and, they, and they're and they with all their friends and they're doing things and maybe not sending as many signs as you would like. But once you learn how to communicate Nothing. with them and you are carrying on that communication, you'll be able to continue to get those signs. So I just want to say that. I don't know if you want to add to that, Craig, or not. Um, so from what I understand, they're getting signs um, to me, my psychic, my, my mediumship is telling me that your child knows, you know, they're there. And, uh, how many more messages do you need to validate that they're there? You know, they're there. Um, so I, I think it's not a question that your child doesn't love you anymore and is, doesn't have time for you anymore. They know that you have a job to do here on earth. And at some point in time, they have to let you go. Like, like we do with our children. We have to, we have to let them go and do their thing and do their life. And again, it's, it's a life experience. We're here to learn. And, you know, I, I wouldn't give up. I would, I would think that uh, continue to work on raising your vibration. Uh, but I think there is a, there is a thing that I think we haven't really talked about, which is intent, which is asking for communication, asking for ways to improve the communication, 
and then giving gratitude when you get it. Gratitude sounds trope, you know, but really what it does is it kind of, uh, not only does it tell the universe that you're receptive to it, it raises your own vibration because now you're, you're, you're believing in it. If you're giving gratitude to something, you really believe it. So it's actually raising your vibration. So uh, gratitude is really important. That's beautiful. And there are so many people thanking you. Everyone's saying that they love listening to you. Um, you are also, they're, they're saying, appreciate this night tonight. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Craig, thank you for being with us. Your talents, film and otherwise are a great gift to us, um, as well as um, such a good evening. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. It's so enjoyable. So I just want to tell you thank you for, for finding me um, a couple years ago and asking us to be, um, to be in that first documentary. I feel so grateful that we were, and I know our kids feel that way too. I think that the kids actually brought you to us, but um, also uh, at the end of these meetings, we always ask everyone to unmute and say goodbye and thank you to you. And I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Irene, for being on here and not feeling great, but you stayed the whole time. I'm so impressed. Thank you, Carol, for speaking. Thank you, Lynn, for speaking as well. And um, have a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend. We have George Thank Anderson. you from Robin. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Craig. Thank Thanks, you. Craig. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good weekend, Thank everybody. Thanks, Thank Craig. You. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Craig. Thank you. Have a good weekend.